Welcome to our presentation on School District Employee Reporting, or SDER, for fiscal year 22. I'm Monica Paz with the School Finance Operations Support Team. We are happy to announce that the SDER application is no longer in Common Logon. The new SDER application is an AD Connect. In this presentation, we will review SDR deadlines, the user manual, we will look at the new reporting system with an ADE Connect and review the SDER template. SDER, or School District Employee Report, is data that is submitted to the Department of Education on an annual basis. Certified and classified employee data is reported for employees that are employed prior to October 1 of the current year. Normally, data is rolled over from prior year in the application. For fiscal year 22, the information from the Common Logon Legacy System will not be rolled over into the new application. This SDR data is used to calculate Teacher Experience Index, TEI. It is also used for the Superintendent's Annual Financial Report, or SAFR, in addition to some federal reporting, such as EDFAX and the biannual EEO5 survey. Deadlines for SDER. The window to, for your first submissions for SDER opens on September 15th. All data must be submitted prior to October 15th, at which point ADE will close the windows for SDER submissions and post preliminary TEI data. If there are modifications that need to be made to the SDER application, you will have an opportunity to do so starting February 1st. All final SDR data must be submitted prior to March 15th. The window for final SDR submissions will close on March 15th. The user manual for the new SDR application will be posted on or before September 15th. We will post this to the Knowledge Center on the ADE School Finance website. In addition to that, we will make sure to email the human resources directors via email for the human resources person that is listed on the budgets page. New reporting system, SDER. Permissions for the new SDER application in ADE Connect were assigned for previous users that had access in common logon to the SDER application. The IT team has rolled over those permissions or roles to the new AD Connect application. If your LEA or district did not have an assigned SDER person, that role for the new SDER application went to your listed district entity administrator. If for whatever reason your district did not have a human resources person or an entity administrator in AD Connect, you will need to contact School Finance uh, via the help desk so that we can assign you the role of SDER-LEA user. To access the new SDER application, you will go to the ADE website. On the blue menu bar, you will see a link to ADE Connect. Click on the link and it will take you to the platform and you should see the assigned role listed for the application of SDER. Once you have logged into the ADE Connect application, you will see SDER. Click on that link and it will open the application for you to begin submissions. The SDER window will show you which LEA you are reporting for and whether or not the submission window is open. Click on Go so that you can begin submissions for your SDER data. Once you are in the application, you will see a download template button. This will download an Excel-based template for you to import your information from your human resources software. The SDER template is the Excel version template that you will use to import the information that is in your human resources software to the SDR application within AD Connect. There are two sheets within the template. The first sheet is where you will enter the detail of the employee data. 
The second sheet is a key for the position codes and education levels. The SDR template has multiple fields. The very first field requires you to enter the fiscal year. The fiscal year that should be reported is the current fiscal year and it should be entered in numeric values. This is an example of the requirements that will be posted in the SDR manual within the Knowledge Center. Note that not all fields within the template are required. As we continue with the information that is required for the SDR template, you'll notice that you need to report the race or ethnicity that the employee has identified with. You will see that you will need to enter either a one or a zero. Note that at least one race must be reported. As we continue, you will see on the SDR template that you must enter the employment start date for all of the employees that you have listed. At which point, you will select from the drop down within the Excel spreadsheet the correct position code. You can see the staff position codes as listed on sheet two of the SDR template. We are allowing for up to six different position codes, MNO FTE, or other FTE. Depending on the position code that you have selected for the employee, the grade level, the education level, and years of experience may be required for certified staff, not for classified staff. You will need to enter the benefits value, the salary for certified staff, and indicate whether or not the employee is PSP. Once you have exported the employee data information from your human resources software, you can validate the information on the Excel spreadsheet and then upload the file to the SDR application. Note that if you have changes to make, only one current usable file is allowed. If you upload a second file, that file will overwrite all the existing data. So please make sure that the file that you are uploading is the last file that you would like to use for current usable file to be considered for the calculation for TEI. Once you have uploaded the file, you will see the file submission status change. The first thing that you will notice is that submitted will show up on the file status. You will want to wait to see that the file status has changed to current usable file. There are some validation errors within the SDR template. If you do have validation errors due to data entry issues, you can click on the blue button to the right to view the validation errors that are within the template that you've uploaded. As the system uploads and validates the information that you have submitted, the first file status that you will see is submitted. Again, you'll want to wait for the status description to show current usable file. If for whatever reason the file is replaced, the status will show to placed. If the template failed, you'll want to make sure to view the validation errors by clicking that button and fixing the errors and then re-uploading the corrected file. In some cases, school finance may reject a file. If you do have fi file, the validation errors that you will see if you have a file that failed will show with an error code and error message along with which column and which row the error is for. These are the most common errors that I encountered during the testing environment. If you have questions about your school district employee report or need additional assistance, please reach out to the school finance account analyst team. If you choose to call the main line, please make sure that you select option three, or you can always submit a help desk ticket via help desk.